Whether you are brand new to InDesign or you've been around a while, I've got seven tips to speed up and simplify the way you work so you can build gorgeous layouts that are as smart and efficient as they are beautiful. My name is Kara Plichnich. I'm an all-around design geek and course creator at bringyourownlaptop.com. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to rock InDesign like a pro. Let's go. Tip number one is to set your default font. Wondering why your text keeps defaulting to some random font? Changing it over and over again eats up a lot of time. So it's worth knowing how to fix it. To fix it once and for all, make sure nothing's selected by pressing Command or Control, Shift, a, grab the type tool and choose the font that you want to be the default. This works for not only the font, but the color, the size, alignment, all those kinds of options. And if you want to make it stick in all of your new documents going forward, make sure that you not only have nothing selected, but that you close any open documents before you make the change. Tip number two is to make mo better text frames. So a lot of times what happens is people end up using separate frames for color fills and for text, and then you have to try and manage them and align them all the time, or people add returns to adjust the vertical alignment of text within a frame. You know what I'm talking about. Or they try and fudge the inset spacing with manual line breaks everywhere. Instead, what you wanna do is get to know the shortcut for your text frame options. So I'm gonna grab my type tool and just create my text frame paste in my text. And here, instead of drawing a separate frame for the background, I'm gonna grab the selection tool to select the frame itself, and I'll just go up here and give the frame a fill color. So now my text and my fill are all in one frame. So that's half the battle, but now to go about setting the text inside the frame the way we want, we're gonna press Command or Control B for better. And here we can tell InDesign that we want the vertical alignment of our text to be centered and we can choose inset spacing. So if we want a little buffer here, instead of adding those line breaks, we can just adjust the inset spacing. Sometimes you may tell it to align to center and you're gonna think that does not look centered. And what you need to do is come in here to baseline options and choose a different setting. So it just kind of depends on your text and what you're trying to do. But if whatever the default is, isn't working, try cap height or try letting or X height maybe and see if that doesn't get you the result you're looking for. The key here is command or Control B for better text frames. Tip number three, take advantage of PSD layer options. Did you know you can control the layers of a Photoshop document from within InDesign? It's super handy for exploring different creative options within a single image and for really cool layout tricks. So here I have this image and it's a layered PSD. So if I right click on it in InDesign and choose object layer options, it shows me a list of the layers. Like I'm basically looking at Photoshop's layers panel here in InDesign. So I can see that this document has a number of layers and I can turn them on or off. So now we're looking at a pink background or maybe a green background or I really like this orange background. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay and I just updated my PSD right here in InDesign. But there's another cool thing we can do with this. If we copy this image right here, and I'm just gonna go to edit, paste in place. So I've got two copies right on top of themselves. And in this top copy, I'm gonna right click again and we're gonna choose object layer options. And this time I'm gonna turn off even that orange background so all my layers are off except for the one that has this subject on it. So now if I click OK and I take the frame for this topmost instance of this image and I drag it out like this, I get this cool effect where the subject looks like he's breaking out of the frame. And then, of course, we can add a text wrap. And if we choose the contour options to be the alpha channel in that PSD document, which basically just means the transparency, then we get this really cool effect. And here's a really cool bonus tip. If you do find that you need a layer that the document doesn't have and you need to open it in Photoshop, instead of fumbling through the links panel to try and find it and right click and open it in Photoshop, 
just hold down Alt or Option and double click right on that image and it will automatically open in Photoshop where you can do whatever you need to do to it. And when you save it and go back to InDesign, it will automatically update. That was a good one, right? Have you learned anything new so far? Let me know in the comments below which tip is your favorite. But remember, we still have four more tips to go. If you're digging these insights and these tips, I've got a full-blown InDesign Essentials course that you'd probably get a lot out of. Check out the link below if you want to join me for a real-world look at the basics of InDesign and beyond. But okay, let's get back to these tips because these next ones are pure gold. Tip number four is to take advantage of InDesign's Gridify feature and the Gap tool. Sometimes you just wanna quickly build an image grid, right? Well, InDesign has a hidden feature just for that, and it works together with an equally purposeful tool to help you build layouts fast, where the spacing and the alignment is already baked in. I'm just gonna grab my frame tool and click to drag a frame. Now, the key here is to not let go of your mouse or your trackpad until you're done. So I'm holding down my trackpad and I'm gonna press the down arrow once and the right arrow twice. And now I can go ahead and let go and look at that. We have six frames ready for images, but there's more. Let's go over to Bridge and I'm gonna grab these images to bring in. Here's where it gets really cool. If we go to our toolbar and we grab the fourth tool from the top, it's called the Gap Tool. The keyboard shortcut is U for unjack my gaps. <laughs> and if you come back over to your images, you'll notice if you hover in the space between them, you can adjust the gaps and realign your grid however you need to. And if you hold the shift key, you can adjust individual gaps just like so. And of course, we can move our images around within the frames per usual. And there's all kinds of ways you can do even more with this tool. So it's worth holding on to this little trick and keeping it in your back pocket. Tip number five is to use generative expand in InDesign. So you know how as designers, we sometimes need to make a square peg fit into a round hole. Well, the designer -y version of that anyway. Sometimes it works, but sometimes the composition just doesn't fit the crop. And your choices are to change the layout, change the image, or fire up Photoshop, but not anymore. So here we can see I have this image frame along the entire width of my page that I want to fill with this image. But this image is only this big, and I want it to basically fill this whole frame, but I don't wanna have to scale it up and lose our subject. So thankfully, if we just select the frame itself and then we come up to window and we choose text to image, we'll select generative expand from the dropdown. We can leave this prompt empty and we'll go ahead and just click generate. And we just drink some coffee and wait. And there it is. So let's see what it came up with. It gives us three different variations, so we can click through them and see if there's one that we like the best. They all look pretty good. I think I like this middle one the best, and that's all there is to it. Tip number six is a little beyond in design. It's make Bridge your bestie. Whether you work on Mac or PC, relying on Finder or Explorer to navigate your files and perform basic search or productivity functions is a serious hassle that you didn't even know you had because you never knew any better. Enter Bridge. Bridge is 100% free for everyone. Whoa. Like You don't even have to be a Creative Cloud subscriber. So you can get to Bridge from within InDesign or any of the Adobe apps by going to File, Browse and Bridge. Or if you look in your Applications folder, you'll see that it's also just its own standalone app. I actually love Bridge so much that it gets its own standalone spot in my dock, even in front of all my other Adobe apps. So you can use it to browse all your thumbnails, preview images, also InDesign documents. You can get larger previews by pressing the space bar, and depending on your settings, you can even use the arrow key to browse through individual pages of your InDesign document. You can search for files by name, by keyword, by label, or even metadata. When you find the images that you wanna work with, you can bring them straight into InDesign by choosing File, Place, 
in InDesign. But that's really just the beginning. We could do a whole separate course just about Bridge. It's that awesome. And it can really help turbocharge your InDesign workflow. Okay, you guys, I saved the best for last. Tip number seven, one-click formatting with Next Style. So when you're working with text in a repetitive pattern, like say on a menu or a directory where there's one paragraph style followed by another paragraph style just over and over again, you can style the whole thing with a single click if you take advantage of the next style setting. So here I have a little menu for some smoothies. So at the top, we have the name of the smoothie, we have a little description about the smoothie, and then we have a price. And that just keeps repeating. So again, we have the name of the smoothie, the description and a price, another smoothie name, description, price, etc. So I have some styles here set up to go with that. I have an item name, and in the style settings, here where it says next style, I set it to item description, okay? Now in the item description style, I set the next style to item price. So what do you suppose I set the next style to in the item price style? Let's go into there and lo and behold, that next style goes back to the loop and restarts the whole sequence over again with item name. So what does that mean? That means we can select all this type and if I go to my paragraph styles, and I right click on the one I wanna use, in this case, item name, that's the one that comes first. I'm gonna right click and choose apply item name, then next style. Are you ready for this? Bam, and just like that, the entire menu or directory or whatever thousand page document just got styled in a single click. Was that a great list of tips or what? Which tip will make the biggest difference in the way you work and what other game-changing tips do you think should be on this list? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you wanna finally learn InDesign in a linear, holistic way, instead of bouncing around between whichever random videos the algorithm serves you, and you want follow along real world projects with step-by-step -step guidance, and not to mention a personable and charismatic instructor, then check out my InDesign Essentials course from the link in the description below, and I will hope to see you there.